Mike Smith, and welcome to Beats and Bullets and Barbecue. Yeah, so Beats, Bullets, and Barbecue, that's what I'm calling it for right now. This is my first video, and don't know how it's going to turn out just yet, but what I want to do is I want to show you how I'm going to assemble this Oklahoma Joe Bandera Smoker. And I'm going to do a few mods to it, some things I've learned off the internet, YouTube, that type of thing. I uh, wanted to do a few extra things myself, but we're going to see how it goes. Don't have a lot of space. I'm in a small townhouse, and right now I got an event going on, so I got a lot of stuff in the house. So it's a little tight, but I'm going to try and make it work. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the box. So this is the Oklahoma Joe Bandera, right? As you can see, the box looks great. Uh, only thing that I can tell that has been sitting in the warehouse for a while you see all the dust but that's okay i already started opening it up and this box was packed very well so i did like that about the oklahoma joe bandera i'll pull that up over there so i've got a few things still left in it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to unbox this spare you the pain of watching all of that and then i'm going to show you where i start sealing it up uh with some rtv sealing all right so there's one thing i noticed is that there's all these boxes that come in it and the back boxes aren't marked. And um, the thing with the boxes is that when you look at the instructions, I need to get better technology because I don't know how to flip this over, but that's okay. But as you look at the as you look at the instructions, it says pull this out of pull this out and pull that out, but they're all in these boxes that aren't marked. So I don't know where everything is, but that's okay. I'm going to figure it out. So I'll be right back. All right. So what we have here now is the smokestack and you gotta put the smokestack on but the thing with the smokestack is i want to seal it so i got this Cillabond, if you could see it there Cillabond 100 percent silicone sealant it's usda approved which is important because they sell this stuff for cars and if it's not usda approved you're going to wind up killing yourself you don't want to do that you want to make sure that it's usda approved all right um i got this from a company called island outdoor llc from amazon I was actually looking for a different company's sealant, but it wasn't gonna come in time. So I got that and their gasket, all right? So um, we're going to put this on. Now, I'm not that handy doing any of this stuff. So if I can do it, that means you can do it. Could I show us how um, nervous is about, about doing this and I spent all this money for all this stuff and I wanna make sure it gets done. But I'm gonna show you a, tip that i learned about doing the sealant from what i've been learning people are seeing rather people have been putting their sealant on all different types of ways so i figured okay this is used initially for cars before it was usda approved for food and smokers right so if you look at the regular rtv sealant that they use for cars they do it in this manner you'll see that it's supposed to be one bead and i'm, I'm not going to put it on i'm just showing you because i'm going to have to be steady and not use the camera when i put it on but it's going to be one bead and it's going to go up consistently right and then you come across and then when you see the hole here you're going to go around the hole or yeah you're going to go around the hole and then you want to come back down and then you're going to wind up over here you go over there you come back here you again go around the hole and then you come back up to wherever you started to be and that's how you apply the sealant on it. Now for me, God damn it, Max. Sorry, that's my dog in the background. So for me, oh, and I showed you something. I did it wrong because it goes in this way, right? So if you can see, it's supposed to go uh, inside. So everything I told you is just about right, except you don't want to do it on this side. You want to do it on that side, which is another reason why I got to make sure I know what the hell I'm doing. But you'll get the instructions when you get yours. That's my instructions right there. And it'll tell you exactly how to do it. So uh, I'm going to put my phone down, stop, stop recording, and actually do this and not screw it up. you see that my bead is not that great, but it is on there. Um, and like, I'm not making this friend by just myself. So I hear that you don't need to do any mods at all that it seals up fine, but I'm doing this mod, so I'm gonna put it on real quick before it even starts to dry. So you see here that I went ahead and put it on. It's on, 
And you might see a little bit of red. I think that's okay. I might wipe it off. But uh, for the most part, smokestacks on. So I wanna show you what I did so far. Uh, this is the smoke chamber. That's the fire chamber, all right? And what I did is I put that RTV seal in anywhere where there was metal to metal. So I've seen instances where it's on the inside and unless it's like those holes there, you really don't need to put it in. Um, but from what I've been seeing, as far as the directions, you put it on metal to metal. So I'm still working on that, but I wanted to show you here, you'll see there's metal to metal and I put it in between the metal of the smoke box and the metal of the fire box. Uh, also down here, if you see those screws in the back where you can barely see anything with shadow, see those two screws? You're not gonna see any there, but you might see it uh, up here. If I can get you some light. And I don't know if you just saw it there. See there? Yeah, there you go. Uh, and over here, there you go. So those are brackets. Where's my phone? Those are brackets. Finger, right there. Those are brackets that hold, or support rather, that support the um, firebox and the smoker. All right. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to show you guys. Let's move over. I'm in my kitchen I'm trying to do this. I wanted to change out these wells, but I went to Lowe's and I went to Harbor Freight. And the problem that I found was that this axle here is not a five eighth or one half inch bore, which is the bore for the 10 inch size they sold there. So I did see online that a lot of folks use pneumatic tires, which I wanted to go with. However, I uh, didn't see the right bore. And I was concerned that if I put on 10 inch tires to an axle that wasn't the right bore, that if I ever had to move it, which I'm not gonna probably move this much, um, but if I ever have to move it, that it may bend the axle. And I didn't want to do that. So I figured if I'm going to do mods, make sure you do the mods right. So I just wanted to point out that I'm putting on these tires right now. <coughs> I'm seeing the wheels right now. But unless you find the right bore length, and I was not able to find the right bore length for this axle, but unless you find the right bore length for the axle and the right bore length for the tires that you want to mod, that I would not recommend putting on any old tires. Make sure that it fits the axle for this unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up here. All right, so here's something funny. These are the leg extenders that you gotta put on to the unit next to Oklahoma Joe Bandera. Being this is Beats, Bullets, and Barbecue, they look like double mag, uh, double magazines to me. Or double load magazines. So you probably won't know what that is if you uh, aren't into the bullets part. But if you are into the bullets part, you understand what that means when it comes to these uh, feet. So it's just something I thought about. You probably won't understand it, but if you do, kudos to you. All right. So now we have the smoke box and the fire box put together. And we have Max doesn't like cameras. It's my little helper, I ain't really doing much. And then we have the stand put together. And I gotta put that, which is gonna weigh a whole lot, onto that. Instructions say you're supposed to have two people do, do it with you, and I recommend that, but I ain't got two people to help me, so I'm gonna have to man up and see what I can do on my own. So I'm gonna put this down because I'm gonna need both hands, and he ain't helping me. All right, so you see I manned up, and I have it on top of the stand. I just have to make sure I line these holes up correctly. So I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I think what I'm gonna do is do just that and make sure I get all of this lined up and ready to go. Be right back. Okay, so we have it for the most part lined up. I need to fix that a little bit, there you go. So you see there's two holes there that I'm gonna to need to seal. And of course, make sure I lined up better. And there's two holes there. 
Now, here's where I screwed the hell up. I needed to put the sealant around the ho around the hose, remember, metal to metal, not on the inside. The inside's not helping us. So I'm gonna have to take this off. Luckily, I have a table right here. I'll just throw it on my table and uh, I will run the sealant and then try and put this on top of it. And hopefully it, it all goes well. I do recommend if you have somebody else to help you with this, that you get somebody else to help you. But like I said, I don't have anybody to help me except for his ass who is looking at barking at another dog if he can. So you see what I did is I put that bead around the holes along the metal and again around the holes and along the metal. Now, if I had somebody to help me, it'd probably line up evenly. It's probably not because I don't have anybody to help me, but that's one of the reasons why you want somebody to help you. Uh, what I did not show you is that the legs here have screws. They have screws. And I didn't worry about putting any of that sealant here because no smoke is going to come out of the legs. Only the, only from the smoke chamber in the firebox, which both of those are going to sit on this. So let me go and try and get that done now. All right, you're gonna see, you yeah, a little bit of a mishap here. Initially, I think I had this one backwards, meaning that the up was bottom and bottom was up. You see where that screw is? I uh, started thinking if I put the rack on it, uh, I was thinking I would have it like this. So I was thinking, well, why would you want the rack to just, you know, sit on the top of something? But as I was, as I put it on, I started thinking, well, that nut might hit on the uh, rack. So I turned it around. There's no instructions to say which way is up. Um, this is what I'm looking at. So if you can see it here. Um, shit, maybe it does say it that way. I can't tell. But, um, yeah, I wasn't sure. So I did what? Shit, now it's sounding me the other way, I think. Which way is this way, right? Now there's nothing underneath it. Fuck. I think. No, that's from the bottom. But do you see any metal on the bottom of that illustration? I don't think so. I see metal on the top. But there, there's no metal on the top. So, I go the right way. I thought I did it the wrong way. This whole time I think I was going to screw it up. I screwed it up because I thought I was going to screw it up. Not because I actually did. So I think what I'm going to do now is, um, fucking pissed. Because you can see that's the screw. I'm pissed. But now I got to take it off again. I'll be right back. All right, I replaced it, meaning I put it in the right direction, I believe, this time. And I tried to clean up a little bit. Need a little bit more here. But I tried to clean up a little bit. So, no, no worries, no foul. This is all added anyway. So, you know, if it ain't the best, don't stress over it. All this is supposed to be fun. Don't be like me who takes everything serious, right? Because it stress you out. You don't need to be stressed out. You want to have fun. All right, so that's that. I'm going to put on these other three and I'll get back to you. Remember, if I showed this to you, these two holes are going to be the only holes that are going outside the smoker, so I'll close those up. Uh, the others I went around. You might see that one I went around, and I was going around the others, but I'm starting to run out of this RTV sealant, so that's what I'm doing for now. I'm going to put this on and put on the other two after this. I'm working on this smoker door, and I had to basically put in the handle, which is there. And you notice right now, I don't see, you don't see any RTV sealant. And that's because I'm a little concerned that if I put, RTV, if I put RTV sealant over here, it's basically going to cause that gasket to be formed and I'm not going to be able to turn it. So if I'm going to have any bit of leakage, it's going to be here, which is fine. I'm fine with that. Uh, also, there's a little baffle that comes across here. The clothes is great, which I have to put that on, uh, but you'll see that soon. But I just wanted to point out that this is probably the only place where metal meets metal that I'm not using the RTV sealant. And it makes sense, because, well, 
Yeah, I'm gonna say it makes sense because it's not two different pieces of metal. All right, I'll be right back. All right. All right, so what we're seeing now is a firebox lid handle. So that is gonna go right here. Now I'm noticing that a lot of these parts, like this handle, they're probably used for other smokers, maybe like the Longhorn or different Oklahoma Joe smokers, which is probably why they have two holes. But we're only gonna use one hole. Because this is going to be screwed in, it means that it's not going to be removed, which means I'm gonna put the RTV sealant on. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna put the RTV sealant on um, primarily, sure, it's like I need glasses, but primarily here around the handle and then here around where the screw is going to go. And that's because I'm concerned that there might be smoke to come out of here. I'm going a little overboard at this point, sealing this up right here. This makes probably make sense, but you know, like they say, metal to metal and you want to make sure that there's no leaks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll be back. I have finished setting up and modding my Oklahoma Joe Bandera, as you see. And I'm going to take you through what I did. So I'm starting off. Let's see, we're gonna move this out. We're gonna talk about this in a moment. We're gonna move this out of the way. Watch out, Max. Starting off, here's the smoke chamber. Oh, I'm sorry, the cook, the fire pit. Um, You'll see I have some RTV sealant here. I did everything where metal touches metal. I've been seeing a lot of folks put it on the outside, but I don't think that's really how you do it. Uh, we got a little bit of, um, I guess you, it's felt. It's not felt, it's like gasket. Um, that's exactly what it is, it's gasket. Now I've seen people put the gasket here, but I wanted to put it on the door because I figure the door is what keeps, or the lid rather, is what keeps the smoke in. Uh, you'll see that I have a little bit of mess up, but whatever, it works. Um, but I went all the way around. All right, in this case, I cut at the seams, but you'll see on the smoke chamber, I did not do that. Um, you see very little RTV. A matter of fact, I think what I'm going to do is um, live near a train. Excuse the train. Shout out to the Maryland Mark who keep us riding. Uh, but you'll see a little bit of this ceiling here, right? And I think what I'm going to do uh, in the neighbor's dog, they, they beef, like all these dogs in the neighborhood beef. In any case, you'll see that um, there's RTV ceiling, but it's very little. I've seen a lot of videos where there's a whole lot. I won't talk too much about the regular setup because you can read that in instructions when you buy yours. I just want to make sure I hit the pertinent parts. All right, so that's done. You see also, I sealed again where metal touches metal. And the handle, you probably won't be able to see it here because I can't see it here, but the handle has metal. So when you put that in, you want to do it from the inside. What you'll see is that it's coming out on the other side, which is good because that means it's closing up any holes. And trains, trains, but it's closing up any holes where smoke would come out. Because the fluid can come out, definitely gas in the form of smoke is going to come out. All right, uh, gotta take the paper off the legs, but uh, I'll do that later. The next thing is the cook chamber, which is also important. So let's go ahead and open this up. What I did not do is put any RTV around where you see any of these nuts. You'll see them here. Uh, that one I did because this doesn't move, but you'll also see it over here in the firebox. Where those nuts are, I didn't put anything. Uh, my thinking of that is that I did not want to seal anything where it needs to turn. Yeah, it turns. Yeah, there you go. Uh, where it turns. So I just left it alone. If I need to seal it in the future, I will. All right, so here's the cook chamber. One of the things I did notice with this product is that there's a lot of oil on it. And you can tell when you touch it, it's sticky. Um, I'm hoping that the stickiness will also help 
with the seal but we'll see what happens also up here you might see that i've noticed that in other videos i don't know what it is i guess it's just extra oil that they try to burn off at some point it is what it is um i'm guessing when i actually set this up for the first time and do my first burn that a lot of that will burn off but we'll see what happens also i put the gasket here and you'll see the gasket i think looks a little bit better uh because it's continuous i tried both ways but the gasket there is continuous all right and it's all around now you will see videos where they have it here but then you see it gets really thin right about here Another issue I have with the smoke, which I'll talk about, and it's really thin here. So this gasket's not gonna fit there. I figured, however, if it's about closing it up and you run it over here, it's gonna make sure that you have a good seal. Uh, also, most people put it on the top. And I figured if you're gonna put it someplace, put it all in one place, which I chose the door. See over there? And what I did is I pushed it all the way back. So at this point, uh, <laughs> I tried to time myself. So he said it's four hours and 40 minutes. I don't think it's that long, but um, it could be maybe I pressed the button or something. But at this point, I think what I'm going to do is close it up and let all of this stuff sit in overnight. Uh, I don't have my watch. It's getting late. You see the sun's going down out here in Maryland. But I'm gonna close this all up. Yeah, let's do that right now. Take that up. Yeah, that's the big stuff. Let's see. Damn it to hell. Damn it. Oh, okay. I got to close the latch the other way. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it seems kind of, it seems kind of good as far as being closed. And over here, this one doesn't turn. This one does, but we don't have any sealant there, so that's fine. So I'm done. Uh, I'm going to step back to give you a better look. Put them all up on top of this smoker right here. So that's the smoker. One of the reasons why I want this Oklahoma Joe the Endeavor is because, as you can see, I don't have much deck space. I'm in this townhouse, and space is very limited. There were uh, lanes and other smokers I wanted to get, and I think I will still get those when I get into a bigger house. But that over there is a, um, I think it's a master belt, but it's a vertical smoker. This over here is just a, a grill. And when I bought the grill, I had no idea about what a offset smoker was. And I saw the offset smokers and I said, I don't need two smokers built in one. And probably about a month or two after I got into to grilling, I found out why I needed an offset smoker. Uh, so I bought this to replace those two. Maybe I'll put them down in the, um, in the back, but uh, it's easier to just have an offset smoker and not have to worry about um, having the fire underneath the food all the time. All right, let's see. All right, so I'm back. So uh, what I was gonna say, so one of the things about smoking and about this grill that I liked as I take a seat. Oh, Max, yes, yes, dog, we love you, dog. Yeah, there goes the dog. There goes the dog. Normally, he doesn't like being on camera, but whatever. He's ready to eat. That's the other thing. So, one of the things about smoking. Okay, okay, you can go inside. Go ahead. Oh, shit. All right. Sorry, guys. Come on. Come on. All right, all right, all right, dog. All right, dog. So, one of the things about smoking is that um, you want a consistent heat. You want to make sure that you're your fire doesn't go out. And that's one of the reasons why I upgraded to this Oklahoma Joe Bandera. Because the smoker that I had, the little smoker I had, basically I had to put in these little wood chunks and um, I had to mod that too, but put in these wood chunks and basically hope that it doesn't burn out. And um, it stayed lit for about 30 minutes before I had to put more wood chunks back into it. The last smoke I did in it, I said, to hell with it. I'm going to do a, um, I'm just going to do splits. And the temp went way up, probably to like 700, but it did come back down. A lot of that I'm sure has to do with, with uh, fire management, but even the um, intake and exhaust 
they're not the best on that particular smoker. I have it um, wrapped up, so I'm not gonna un take off all the all the stuff off of it to show it to you at the moment. I'm tired. Maybe I did do this for four hours. I don't know. Um, however, that being said, what I wanted to show you, and for some reason I can't flip back and forth on this stupid iPhone, but I'm gonna try it. Yeah, that ain't working. Okay, I'll do it this way. This here, um, you're gonna see it backwards, but what it is, it's a cover. It's a cover for your smoker. I spent about $322 for this smoker. It's normally $379. I've seen people get it as low as $80. I've seen people spend as much as $500 for it. So anywhere between $80 to $500, which is a big swing, can you find a smoker? To me, whether you spend $80 or $500, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that if you spend your money on this, you want it to last as long as possible. The metal on this is still a little thin. It's probably better than what I had, but it's not exactly what I want. But with my... Um, requirements or restrictions rather I have to get what I have or what I can get and I think the Oklahoma Joe is the best that I can get with my current restrictions that said I want it to last as long as possible so I went ahead and I bought the um, the cover cover is like 30 bucks if you're going to spend $300 on the smoker spend another 30 bucks for a cover do it uh, the mods you'll find people say that you don't need them I figured let me do them uh, because I have been having issues um, controlling my temperature. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, I figured let me do the mods. But you don't have to do the mods. You can just set up the smoker. I think the mods help. We'll see what happens. So, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the cover, which you don't need to see me put on the cover because you can figure that out on your own, right? But I'm going to put on the cover, and within the next few days, I'm going to do my first burning, which should be about two hours smoke and then I'll probably put some food on it and see how that goes one of the things I read oh um, two more things one of the things I read in the manual is that it says keep some high temp paint on hand and you'll see a lot of people say that the um, the paint burns off and that's going to happen if you apply fire to steel so that's one thing the other thing um, which I forgot to mention is that you want to make sure that you seal everything tight. I've heard a lot of people complain about the smoker and I'm wondering that when they put the screws in with the nuts and the bolts and all that, if they're really tightening it. I found myself at some points using wrenches, using socket wrenches, using pliers to tighten all the screws with the bolts and all of that because it needs to be tight, tight, tight. Um, for two reasons. Most importantly, you don't want it to fall on you when you're smoking. If you can see that grill right there that's behind it, that fell on me while I was grilling one time. And it fell on me with fire in it because I let the stupid person from a big box store, which I won't name, but a big box store, put it together. That person was probably trying to go home, probably put a few screws in it, and didn't sell it. And I was pissed. I called them up about it and I complained and I got nothing. If I didn't catch it, literally catch it with coals in it. So that's another thing. I didn't get burned, thankfully. But if I didn't catch it, my house could have burned down. You don't want your house to burn down. All right. If your house, especially in my situation, my house burns down, everybody, else, everybody else's house is burning down. We don't want that. So with this smoker and any other smoker that you have, I'd highly recommend making sure all those screws are tight. So one for safety. The other one, um, of course, because you want to keep all the smoke in, all right? And um, there was one other thing I was going to mention. Oh, yeah, there was one more thing I remembered. Register your product. You, bought, you paid all this money for it. If something happens, you want to be able to call um, Oklahoma Joe, which I think is Char Grill or somebody, or Char Broil. But you want to be able to call them and say, yo, look, my stuff messed up. Give me something back for it. But if you don't register it, you're not going to get that. So register it. That's the last thing in the manual. Make sure you register your product. Use the cover. Make sure that your um, investment is um, protected and you're going to enjoy yourself. So thanks again for coming out. This has been
and this is my first video, so I gotta remember the name of that I called it. But this has been Beats, Bullets, and Barbecue. See you next time.